Thank you for joining The Right Dose. We will take a trip through the science behind pesticide use in Florida agriculture. Our goal is to educate pesticide applicators and the public in the critical areas of integrated pest management according to Florida regulations. So, sit back, relax, and put your learning hat on as we discuss the right dose and how we can possibly impact our environment, our economy, and our communities. Welcome to The Right Dose. This is chapter three of our study guide, uh, Applying Pesticides Correctly. So today we're gonna be talking about the label. You've heard us on the previous episode talking about how the label is the law. So today we're going to go in depth on what the label is, what does it have, what we need to be looking at when we are using a certain product. Okay, so today again we have Luis and Aja who are going to talk to us about the all things label, okay? So, let's start from the beginning. Aja, what is the label of a product? Okay, the label is what's going to be affixed to the pesticide container, whether that be a bag, a container, a box, or even a um, tank. And what it has in it is all of the information pertaining to the product itself, um, the direction for use, first aid procedures, and then all of the crops and um, pests that are listed for use in this product. Talk to us a little bit about those parts of that label. What is in there that is so important, oh so magical about the label? Okay, so the first part of it is going to be um, kind of the front page of the label. It's always going to say uh, restricted use pesticide on very large letters if it is a restricted use pesticide and it gives the reason why, uh, for example, acute toxicity um, that would be harmful to humans or the environment. Um, next, what you're going to see on the label is going to be the brand name or the trade name and that's normally in large lettering and that is the name that that specific manufacturer gives to their product. And in this example that Luis is holding up, this name is Seven. That is the brand or trade name of this product. Next, down in the ingredient label, what you're going to see there is going to be the active ingredient and any other inert ingredients that are in this pesticide formulation. Now, when you're looking at the active ingredient, we've got two names that are going to be listed here. The first name is gonna be what's called the common name, which on seven is Carbaryl. As you go down the label, you'll see the ingredient statement. And in page 38 of your manual, Applying Pesticides Correctly, there are some examples of three different pesticides and their ingredient labels. So for example, if you look at Prowl 3.3 EC herbicide, which is the middle image here, the active ingredient in that is pendimethalin. That is going to be the common name of that active ingredient. Then after that, there's a big long name that has numbers and dashes and some really actually hard to say chemical names. And that is the actual chemical name of that active ingredient. So that's what we have um, on that part of the ingredient statement. Next is gonna be listed other ingredients. That's gonna make up the rest of the percentage of what's in that container. Now, if the other ingredients that are in the product do have a toxicity level associated with them, they will be listed individually, but if they do not, it will be collectively another percentage of the ingredients that are in that container. Next, we're going to see the signal word. And if you go to the following page, um, on page 39, there is a gramoxone uh, pesticide label there. You can clearly see danger, uh, poison with a skull and crossbones. 
The signal word refers to the acute toxicity of that pesticide, and it's the active ingredient in that pesticide. Next one you're gonna see on the pesticide label is going to be some first aid treatments, some practical treatments um, for the physicians. Keep in mind that if you have a danger or danger poison product, there is always going to be an extra note to the physician with an additional procedures or suggestions for medical treatment for that product specifically. As you move through the label, there are other parts such as precautionary statements. Um, they have to do with uh, PPE, and then we're moving into the ag use statement, and that's where we have restricted use pesticides um, that fall under the worker protection standard. So let's let's define PPE for those that don't understand acronyms. PPE is okay. personal protective equipment. Yes, exactly. The equipment that you're going to need to protect yourself, gloves, you know, uh, boots and uh, eyewear, etc. Right, any protective clothing such as an apron or a Tyvek suit. Mm -hmm. um, as we move through as well, there's going to be the physical and chemical hazards that has to do with what this particular product may do to your application equipment. Um, just to keep in mind any corrosion, that sort of thing that you would need to uh, be aware of once you're using this product. There are also other sections on environmental hazards, uh, toxicity possibly to aquatic animals, for example, or pollinators such as bees. Then you're going to be moving into the bulk statement of this, of this label, and that's going to be the use and directions for use statements. And that's going to list all of the commodities, sites, and pests that this product will uh, manage and control. And it will also give rates of use of what to use. And it will give any re-entry intervals. Uh, that's the amount of time that you have to wait after applying this product to go into the site. And it will also list any pre-harvest intervals that must be followed. And that pertains to the amount of time after the product is applied that the commodity may be harvested. So also on the pesticide label, you're going to see the formulation of the pesticide, and that's basically the form that the pesticide is in. So for example, if you see D, that means that that is a dust, or WP would be a wettable powder. Accompanied with the use statement is going to be a number. That is going to correspond to the chemical family that this pesticide falls into, which shows the mode of action that is used to kill that particular pest. And if you remember from our previous video about pest management and pest resistance, you have to make sure that you rotate those modes of action. So that's an easy indicator as to which mode of action that pesticide is using to control that pest. So one of the things that I want to make clear that this label changes with time. Mm -hmm. Every time you have a new product, you, you from time to time you have to read that label just to see if there's any other statements in there that are going to be important. Again, we're going to have this statement repeated over and over and over again. The label is the law. If you are mishandling a pesticide, you are breaking federal law. You may be putting yourself and others in danger. So that is why the label needs to be understood and read and studied because there's a lot of good information in there for you to keep safe, to be safe and also to keep others safe and the environment. Let's talk about those signal words. Uh, what are they? Why, do, why are they there? And uh, what do they mean? So we got four signal words. Uh, we got danger, poison, danger, warning, and caution. Uh, basically what they mean is what Aja just said is that acute toxicity that could happen to you. And what, it, what acute toxicity means is that harm that could happen right away or within 24 hours that that pesticide may have a negative effect on you, either on your skin or your eyes, or if you inherit that pesticide. Uh, so depending on the war, it's gonna be that acute toxicity, it's gonna be more toxic or less toxic uh, that pesticide. Uh, normally, uh, if you have a pesticide that has danger poison, it will all 
almost always have the crossbone uh, symbol with it. Uh, that basically means that it's highly toxic and it should be uh, used with carefulness. Um, the, with caution. With caution, sorry. <laughs> um, so basically, that's what the signal word says. Uh, that acute toxicity, how toxic or how harmful could be that pesticide either to the handlers or to the environment and other organisms that animals, pollinators, and uh, fish, for example, and uh, animals like that. Um, again, and acute toxicity will be that harmful that will basically just happen uh, either within those 24 hours or immediately. Don't confuse that with what is chronic toxicity, which is something that will happen across the year. If I'm not using correctly my PPEs, I may get something that is called chronic toxicity, which is something that will happen. It could happen in months, it could happen in years. So it's very important for a uh, pest applicator to always use those PPEs, always follow the label in order to not get this chronic toxicity. So it's very important to understand that when the label has this signal work, it doesn't have to do anything with this chronic, it has to do with this acute, with this immediate, um, immediately immediately uh, exposure to that pesticide. That's going to be your, uh, your signal work. So it's important that we talk about toxicity. We hear on the news uh, the word toxin a lot and everything is toxic. Even water is toxic. You can intoxicate yourself with too much oxygen. So there's a threshold that our body withstands on a specific uh, substance, okay? So the LD50 is one of those terms that we use in terms of toxicity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody's afraid of toxicity and toxins and uh, the media knows it. But we're here to kind of explain what actually toxicity is. So the more toxic, the less amount of volume you're going to need for that chemical to react in your body or in an environment or in a test subject in terms of laboratory and how you develop those LD50s. Mm -hmm. The more volume of uh, a chemical that you need, the less toxic it is. So that seems to uh, escape the narrative of a lot of these news releases on toxic chemicals, toxic waste. Everything has a toxicity level at some point. And just to clarify, when Jonah just said LD50, that basically means lethal dose in the 50% of the population. So all these pesticides have gone through certain research and within that research they test the toxicity of these pesticides in populations of certain animals and that LV value means that that pesticide will kill that population, 50% of that population, uh, when they're uh, supplying a certain amount. We talked about signal words. Next, we're going to be talking about different types of registration for those pesticides. Why do we need different types of registrations and what are they? Okay, well, um, we have the Section 3 registration and that is basically what all pesticides get registered under. And that's the, that's the initial registration that the EPA allows for these pesticides. And the, the registrations after that are going to depend on the usage, or maybe some uh, emergency situations that are needed to control certain pests. So the first one we have is a 24C label, and that's called a special local needs registration. And when that comes into play is when there is a commodity or a site or a target pest that is not listed on the label, but could be useful to control that pest in a different area or a different commodity. So for example, in citrus, we have Landmaster 2, which is a herbicide, and it has um, its glyphosate and 2,4-D as its active ingredients, and it has a supplemental label of a 24C label to be used in citrus in Florida. Now, we also have an emergency exemption registration, and an example of that are the bactericides that we use in citrus, to help control HLB in citrus trees. We have an emergency exemption for that because there were no pesticides labeled to help control that disease. So we were granted the emergency exemption by the EPA to use this product 
on citrus in Florida. Now the important thing that pesticide applicators need to keep in mind when you have these special exemptions or these spe supplemental labels is what they're called is that you must have that supplemental label in your possession every time you apply that pesticide. And it's very important that you do because as Jonah was saying, the label is the law and ultimately you as the pesticide applicator are responsible for what you do with that pesticide. And you, this is your proof of showing that you know that this is how, how the pesticide needs to be applied in this special situation. The last registration that we have is a minimum risk pesticide and that's basically for something that has a very low to minimum risk of any harm being done to either humans or uh, non-target species or the environment and basically it does not need an EPA approved label nor does it go through a review process like restricted use pesticides do every 15 years to meet current safety regulations. So in conclusion, we talked about the label in that what is the label, what parts of the label we can find, the importance of all of these individual parts in applying uh, the, a specific pesticide, also different signal words that we can find in there. Uh, we talked about toxicity. We also talked about the registration process and uh, different types of registration. You can contact your local extension agent and they can guide you through all of these. If you lose your label for your pesticide, we can also go in the computer and find it for you. Remember, the label is the law. Read the label, find out what uh, the requirements are before you start applying a pesticide. If you want further information, contact your local extension agent. We are here to help. This is the right dose. Thank you for watching. The brands or trade names mentioned in this episode were used under the intention to provide education and not for marketing or promotional purposes. Uh -huh.